the 36th UIM F1H2O World Powerboat Championship once again saw the world's most talented and fearless marine motorsport racers lock horns for the world's most prestigious title in powerboat racing. The 2019 season boasted five venues and six Grand Prix in some of the most stunning locations around the world, including two brand new venues as round one kicked off in the Middle East with Dammam, Saudi Arabia, before hitting the European stage in Portimao, Portugal, then round three in Evian, France, after which it was over to the Far East where Xiamen, China hosted the first ever back-to-back -back Grand Prix, with the season culminating in the traditional season finale in Sharjah, UAE. And the competition did not disappoint. It was a spectacular year of racing and drama, heartbreak and glory, as 20 of the world's top F1 drivers and nine teams from across the globe put it all on the line for the 2019 UIM F1H2O World Powerboat Championship title. And it's not just about the racing. F1H2O is a lifestyle. The competition on water accompanied by partying, glamour, shows, and festivities that all make an F1H2O event a three-day celebration as tens of thousands watch live or from their channels across the globe to witness one of the most intense motorsport spectacles unfold throughout the year. In this season review, we bring you what happened in 2019. Round one of the 2019 season was in Dammam, Saudi Arabia, marking the first Grand Prix to be raced in the kingdom since 2004, and it would be the 280th UIM F1H2O Grand Prix race. Dammam hosted the series for the first time as thousands flocked to the race area, taking pictures and selfies, meeting and greeting drivers and crew, and even Saudi royalty was in attendance to enjoy and welcome the UIM F1H2O series to the kingdom for the first time in 15 years. All eyes were on Team Abu Dhabi, the 2018 team champions whose three drivers closed out the year-end podium in a season of unprecedented dominance with Sean Torrente winning his first UIM F1H Duo world title. I think it was an awesome year and uh, so excited to do it again hopefully and it's so awesome to see my boat with the number one on it. I've been working real hard for that for a long time and, and my motivation is the same to win the championship. The only difference now I know I can do it because I've actually done it. So, uh, so hopefully we can do it again and uh, go back to back and be the first American in history to do it. And uh, I believe the first uh, team for Abu Dhabi to do it for sure. Team Abu Dhabi parted ways with 2018 world runner-up Eric Stark, with 2018 world number three Tani Al Kamzi racing alongside Torrente. Torrente would be driving the number one boat in 2019. His season goal was simple: defend the title. Following a year of mixed results, CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team ended 2018 solid runners-up in the world team standings behind Team Abu Dhabi, and they continued with the same lineup in Dammam, with three-time world champion and nine-time Grand Prix winner Philip Schiap leading the charge, hoping to make up for a lackluster 2018 season. Joined by teammate and fellow Frenchman Peter Morin, who had an outstanding 2018, picking up two podiums and three top five finishes. Former Team Sweden continued as Team Amaravati, led by a resurgent and informed five-time Grand Prix winner Jonas Andersson, alongside his young Swedish compatriot Eric Eden. Emirates Racing finished the 2018 season in fourth in the team standings as the only female Grand Prix winner in the history of the sport, Marit Stromoy, ended the year ranked sixth in her 13th season on the tour. Her teammate is again Bartek Marsalek of Poland. Two-time world champion Sami Selio of Finland set out on his bid for a third title with backing from the Emirate of Sharjah after signing a multi-year cooperation agreement with the Sharjah International Marine Sports Club and for the eighth year will be partnered by fellow Finn Philip Roms in the rebranded Sharjah team. Maverick F1 Racing Cedric Deguin would race alongside fellow Frenchman Beranger Robar. Looking to put a tough season behind them and start afresh was Dubai's victory team with four-time world champion Alex Carella of Italy racing alongside Emirati Ahmed Al Hamali, who failed to get a podium all year. Portuguese outfit F1 Atlantic were again led by team principal and experienced driver Duarte Benevente and they had a new team member, Italian Alberto Comparato. Blaze performance was led by team... <laughs> Oh! 
principal and 12-time Grand Prix winner Francesco Cantando, who was joined by American Greg Foster, a top racer in the North American Tour. And so the first Grand Prix of the year was set to begin. The weather, however, did not cooperate in Damam. Rough winds, big waves, choppy seas, and that meant the official rebellion qualifying had to be canceled. And although there was hope for respite on race day, UIM F1H2O officials decided the conditions were unsafe for racing. And so all eyes were on round two. Portimao was the European city of sport for 2019 and it hosted the 18th Grand Prix of Portugal on the mighty Arad River and it's traditionally been one of the most popular destinations on the tour. The second round of the UIM F1 H2O season kicked off as crowds gathered along the river shoreline and those brave enough experienced the thrill of being in an F1 H2O boat firsthand with a ride in the F1 H2O two-seater. There were 19 drivers from nine teams looking to post their first points of the season after the weather disrupted season opener in Damam, Saudi Arabia. There was one change to the team lineups in Portimao as 2018 world runner-up Eric Stark rejoined Maverick F1 Racing, the team for which he won a first ever Grand Prix title in London. He would be the third driver alongside team principal Cedric de Guin and Beranger Robar. This is almost a recap from last year, but uh, the difference from last year is uh, we got some more time to prepare ourselves. We test uh, two weeks ago home in Sweden, so for sure this year I'm going to try to win the championship this year. And so 19 drivers from nine teams were lined up for the first race of the season in Portimao. Defending world champion Sean Torrente took pole position in the Rebellion official qualifying and led from the start, chased by his teammate Daniel Kamzi and then Team Amaravati's Jonas Anderson in third. CTICF1 Shenzhen China driver Philip Xiap overhauled Emirates Racing's Moritz Stromoy to move up into fourth position in the second lap and gave chase to Jonas Anderson, but the Swedish ace held off the Frenchman who retired halfway through the race. With 10 laps left in the race, Daniel Kamzi increased the pressure on Sean Torrente, trying to find a way around his teammate, cutting the gap between them down to a boat's length, but Torrente held on to the lead. The laps ran out and Torrente hung on to defend his Grand Prix title in Portimao. Sean Torrente was the 2019 Grand Prix of Portugal champion. Daniel Camzi once again runner-up. Anderson ends a fantastic race in third. Sean Torrente kicked the new season off in style, earning 20 points. His teammate Al Kamzi ensuring that defending world team champions Team Abu Dhabi continue where they left off atop the world team standings. I guess the first 20 laps, the boat was working amazing. I was lapping boats, I built up a seven second lead, and I was kind of just pacing, I had a good pace going. And then I go down to the bridge corner, and I hit the down, I fly past the corner, and I'm like, what, what happened there? And then I start looking at the, the, the data, and I realize the trim isn't working all the time. I was able to hang on and Tani knew I was wounded because our team knew I was wounded and he was coming and I was just doing everything I could just to hang on to the damn thing and get it to the end and thankfully I did and we finished one two and man, it's like a dream come true again. The third round of the 2019 UIM F1 H2O World Championship season was held in Evian for a fifth consecutive year as a 23rd Grand Prix of France was raced on the waters of Lac Leman in one of the most beautiful corners of France, a world famous holiday spa destination at the foothills of the majestic Alps. There were no changes in team lineups from round two with 19 drivers from 19s ready to do battle in Evian. Special race for me for sure four time uh, without result and uh, I don't know what do you expect. Uh, difficult to think at uh, the podium. Now we are ready for sure, we work uh, a lot. I think it's enough four time. In the official rebellion qualifying, Frenchman Philippe Schiap wanted to put the jinx of Avion behind him. The Frenchman unable to complete all but one race and never achieving a podium in home waters. But he romped home. <laughs> to 
a convincing pole position win over Stromoy, Anderson, and then Torrente in P4 on the starting pontoon. I have a lot of motivation at the end, and I'm very happy. It's good for my team because a lot of, a lot of work. Nice, nice. Thanks. time consecutive world champion was off to a great start with a comfortable lead but on lap 15 Schiap's run came to yet another heartbreaking and familiar end on Lac Le Mans. That moved Team Amadavati driver Jonas Anderson into the lead. Two Team Abu Dhabi drivers battled for second position Daniel Kamzi passing Sean Torrente. But before the lap could be completed, Maverick F1 Cedric de Guin barrel rolled, bringing out the yellow flag. And Al Kamzi was cruelly bumped back down to third. From the restart, Anderson was able to control the pace out front, but was unable to shake off Torrente, his lead fluctuating between two and four seconds. Behind them, Daniel Kamzi and Moritz Stromoy had a titanic battle. Stromoy passing Al Kamzi on lap 25 before Al Kamzi struck back next lap. In the end, the Swedish driver held on to take a well-deserved sixth career victory. Jonas Andersson is the Grand Prix of France champion. Yeah, I mean, I had a perfect start. The setup will try to beat uh, Schapp for the first turn. I didn't do it. I took Marit in the start, and then uh, Schapp was just leaving. He was so fast. When he broke down, I just tried to, to see the gap to Sean, and I think Sean is uh, more smart this day than before, so he didn't push too much for uh, because here in Evian it's very difficult with all the weights, but it was quite easy race. Daniel Kamzi finished third ahead of Stromoy, and Alex Carella finally ended his string of DNFs with sixth place. In the world standings at the end of round three in Evian, Torrente led three points ahead of Anderson in second, with Al Kamzi third ahead of Stromoy and Peter Marin. UIM F1H to a World Powerboat Championship season returned to Xiamen, China, a bustling and ancient port city with a rich maritime and cultural heritage that offered an exciting racing venue on the challenging waters of Wuyan Bay, which last hosted a Grand Prix in 1997. In a historic new format for the UIM F1H2O Tour, Xiamen would host the first ever back-to-back -back races with rounds four and five of the 2019 season held over two days. The Senstar Grand Prix of Xiamen and the Senstar Grand Prix of China. There were 18 drivers from nine teams competing in the two Senstar Grand Prix in Xiamen with a few changes. Alex Carella switched places with Eric Stark, Carella joining Maverick F1 and Stark filling Carella's shoes in victory team. Team Amadovati reverted to Team Sweden, led by Jonas Andersson, who was second in the world standings behind Torrente going into the Grand Prix of Xiamen, but he was on a roll with the win in Evian and a good result in China could get him on track for a first ever world title. Anderson's biggest rival was world standings leader and round two winner in Portimao, Sean Torrente. The American wanted to seal his second world championship in Xiamen, where there were two races and a maximum 40 points on offer. Maverick F1's David Delpin was a victim of the tough conditions, flipping over in practice, a sign that teams and drivers had their work cut out for them, preparing their setups for the two races. In the official Rebellion qualifying, Philip Schiap came very close to pole position before his boat blew over. In Q3, it was neither Torrente nor Anderson who took charge, but Alex Corella, who stunned the field in qualifying to take his first pole position in 18 months. Despite a jump start by Peter Marin, Corella soon took control of the race in his bid for a 16th career Grand Prix title for his new team Maverick F1. Behind Corella, Schiap slipped back to P2 as Jonas Anderson moved up to chase Corella, with Stromoy just behind Anderson, never letting the Team Sweden driver out of her sight, putting the pressure on for 32 laps. Sean Torrente, the defending world champion and world standings leader. <laughs> Oh. 
Carter going into Xiamen started back in ninth, making his way up to fifth, but he was overhauled by his Team Abu Dhabi teammate Tani Al Kamsi. But when Shiap and then Al Kamsi broke down in quick succession, Torrente moved up to fourth. Out ahead, having taken the lead in the opening lap, Alex Carella never looked back, closing out a start to finish race win to put two seasons of frustration behind him. Anderson held Stromoy off for runner up. Torrente came in fourth. That result was enough to put Jonas Anderson on top of the world standings at the end of Xiamen, three points clear of Torrente, with Stromoy moving up into third, followed by Alcamzi fourth and Corella fifth. It was difficult this morning qualifying. After in the race, I had Peter Morin behind me, but he, he made a jump start, so I know that he was a uh, one lap uh, behind, but okay, I want to finish. Uh, after a long time, I didn't want to leave him go, and I just want to keep pushing and finish first this race. And uh, all my team deserve this. They work uh, one month like crazy, three days they working like crazy with what we have, and so it's uh, unbelievable. And just a special, special day for me. But everything could change the next day in round five. The fifth round of the UIM F1H2O World Powerboat Championship would be the day after the Grand Prix of Xiamen with the Senstar Grand Prix of China marking the second race in the first ever back-to-back -back Grand Prix in the sport. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really tough because we have been working to rebuild the engines for two boats this uh, yesterday evening and almost in the night, so it's, it's tough with a small team, but uh, everything so far feels very good, so hopefully it's stay in one piece. Yeah, so I'm three points behind now and I was three points up coming in. Our goal is always to have our fate in our hands in Sharjah. So we have, have, a, have to have another good race today. Yesterday, once I got into a decent point scoring position, I literally just wanted to maintain and finish the race and get my points and move on to today and know I have another chance to, to improve. We're here to win championships, not boat races. I mean, that's my only goal when I wake up in the morning every day is to be world champion. So uh, I want to keep this number one on the boat. With his back against the wall, Torrente knew he had to step up his game, and that's just what he did. Taking pole position to lead from the start in the Sandstar Grand Prix of China, the American trying to reclaim the world standings lead from Anderson. The conditions were very rough on Wu Yanbei as the winner from the previous day, Alex Carella, blew over in an attempt to overhaul Torrente. Four yellow flags and half the field unable to complete the race, it was Shiap and Anderson who moved up into second and third positions behind Torrente, both passing Moritz Stromoy. They brought the pressure on Torrente, but the American held his nerve and closed out the win, his second of the year, which shot him back into the lead of the title race. Five points clear of Jonas Anderson in second, Stromoy in third on 37 points, then Alcamzi fourth. But that third place for Anderson meant he was still very much in the running, just five points behind Torrente going into the final round in Sharjah. It was a crazy race. Everybody was coming for me. I was just trying to manage the race. You know, I'm just thinking about the championship. I knew Jonas was back there in fourth and fifth. He actually ended up third, but um, it's just about getting in front of that championship. We're so happy to get the win, especially after yesterday, man. We, we just got our butt kicked yesterday. And the team all rallied, and, and we just did a great job, all of us together, the whole team, from front to back, and we come back and got a win. A whole enemy. And so the UIM F1H2O world title would be decided once again in the last round in Sharjah. Round six, the final race of the season, the year, the decade. The UIM F1H2O Grand Prix of Sharjah with only two men left standing in the title race. Sean Torrente and the sleek might of Team Abu Dhabi versus Jonas Anderson. <laughs> oh. 
Johansson and the scrappy, never say die tenacity of Team Sweden. The showdown was on Khaled Lagoon, where world champions have been forged for nearly two decades. Sharjah hosting the traditional season finale of the UIM F1H Duo World Championship since 2004. Jonas Anderson has never won a world title in 14 years on the tour, and this was as close as he'd ever come to a shot at becoming world champion. But the odds were stacked against him. He had to finish the race in first place with at least one boat between him and Torrente. Yeah, for sure, this weekend we have some pressure. We can win the championship, and it has never happened before. So, But I have nothing to lose. Try to make uh, a clean race and uh, have some luck to to finish with uh, the engine in one piece. But waiting to throw a wrench in the championship contender's plans are a formidable cast of former Sharjah winners and world champions who want to finish the year on top of the podium. Former Sharjah Grand Prix winner Marit Stromoy, three-time world champion Philip Schiap of CTIC F1 Shenzhen, China, four-time world champion Alex Carella of Maverick F1, Eric Stark of Victory Team, and Daniel Kamzi, Torrente's Team Abu Dhabi teammate and fourth going into Sharjah. Jonas Anderson sees the advantage with a brilliant lap in the Rebellion official qualifying, taking his fifth career pole position and starting four places ahead of his rival Sean Torrente, with the likes of Schiap, Stark and Alcamzi standing between the two world title contenders. Anderson knew he had to hold the lead, Torrente knew he had to at least finish second to retain the world title. Crowds lined the lagoon in their thousands for the final race of the season. The lights go out, the race is on. Great start from Jonas Anderson. The Swede surges ahead on the opening straightaway to the commitment buoy. Right up there with Anderson is Philip Schiap. Torrente also making a great start as a collision between Alcamzi and Stark helps push Torrente up neck and neck with Alcamzi. Anderson is in the race of his life, opening up a nice gap with Schiap in second, hoping Schiap and Alcamzi can hold off the hard-charging Torrente. Torrente in the number one boat, cuts inside on the straightaway, Alcamzi on the outside, Torrente moves up, they are dead even, and Torrente swings around and passes Alcamzi, Torrente moves up into third. Great start for the American, moving up from fifth to third already, but he knows he also has to get past Schiap. Corella loses control, he spins and rolls. Corella's boat badly damaged, his race is over, that's a yellow flag. Anderson holds off Shiap on the restart, maintaining his lead, Torrente in third behind Shiap. But just when Anderson rebuilds a gap over Shiap, the yellow flag comes up yet again as Cantando takes out a buoy. The laps count down. Anderson's fate was virtually in Shiap's hands. The Frenchman, the only thing standing between the world title hopes of both Anderson and Torrente. But with the reduced field, passing would prove more difficult for Torrente. What a gap Anderson has opened there. He's done everything he needed to do. Torrente still doggedly pursuing Shiap, and they were in the final lap. Anderson is just one lap from a first ever world title. But then Shiap broke down with just Three pins to go, Torrente moved past the limping CTIC boat and Torrente came through in second to take the world championship. What a cruel blow for Team Sweden, what a twist of fate for Anderson. Torrente and Team Abu Dhabi celebrated an incredible world title defense that literally came down to the last lap while Jonas Anderson slumped over in defeat despite having just won the race. The world title was within his grasp and it was snatched away. Torrente on top of the world, now a two-time back-to-back world champion. Anderson and Torrente complete the year on equal 79 points, but Torrente wins the UIM F1H2O title on countback. Stromoy just manages to hold on for a career best, season end result in third. Alcamzi fourth, Marshalek finishes fifth, then Corella sixth. Team standings, Team Abu Dhabi once again retained their world team title comfortably with the oh. 
106 points. Team Sweden were world runners up on 89 points and Emirates Racing finished third. Uh, I just pushed like crazy and I, I, once I was in third, I knew I was in striking distance. I just kept putting the pressure on, putting the pressure on and finally the seven broke and man, I saw it with a lap to go, I couldn't believe it. And my radio man's going crazy, I'm trying to hold it together for one more lap and uh, I couldn't believe it, man, it was awesome. I'm so thankful for these guys um, and everything they do for me. Um, we just fight to the end. Today was exactly who we are. We just fight and fight and fight and fight until, until we get what we need. It was another thrilling season that went down to the wire, the last race of the decade. See you next race as the 37th season of the UIM F1 H2O World Powerboat Championship gets underway in 2020.